You've decided that you would like to perform a response surface experiment, and in particular, you've chosen a central composite design. So that's a good start, but there are three variations you can choose from. But if you open Jump, you're going to see a different list of options. So what's going on? Well, that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to explain these Jump options to you, and I'll also show how you can select your preferred flavour of design, whether it's a circumscribed, inscribed or face-centred, based on the options available inside Jump. So let's get into the detail, and I think the starting point needs to be that we understand the different flavours of design that are available to us. At the centre of each of these designs is either going to be a full factorial design or a fractional factorial design. And traditionally we render these in uh, three dimensions, so a design based on three factors. My drawing skills are not very good, so if you don't mind moving forward, I'm just going to use a two-dimensional rendering. So this is a design based on two factors, would look like this. Now, the key thing with the central composite design is we add additional points. We add center points and axial points, sometimes known as star points. This animation will help. And the distance of those axial points is chosen in such a way that the points can be connected by a circle, and that circle circumscribes the region defined by the central factorial design. And it's that circle that gives the design a rotatable symmetry, and we're going to see that's a very important property. Uh, why is that? Well, let's think about what we're trying to do with the response surface. We want to describe the behaviour of response across the design space, typically for the purposes of optimization. And we don't know ahead of time whether the optimal conditions are going to be sort of in this direction or over here or down here. We therefore would like to be able to make projections that are uniformly good in all of those different directions, and that's what's achieved with the rotatable property. So it's a very desirable property. Now remember, to achieve that, what we've done is to have these axial points go outside the range that's defined by the inner factorial design, and sometimes that's just not a practical thing to do. So one way to resolve that is to take the entire design and shrink it down, and we shrink it so that the axial points then sit on the levels that were the original range for the factorial design. In that instance, we have what's known as an inscribed design, so a central composite inscribed design. The problem with that is we are shrinking the inner factorial design, and therefore we reduce the effective design space. Now, a compromise is to only shrink the axial points, so we shrink the axial points to the same size as the factorial design. In two dimensions, it's a bit misleading because it looks like the points go onto the edge of the square. Well, they do in two dimensions, but in three dimensions, the axial point goes onto the face of the factorial cube. So this is known as a face-centered design. Here's a graphical summary of the difference between these different flavors of the central composite design. But here's the list and jump, and we're not seeing those options available to us. So let me show you how we use jump to create your preferred design choice. First thing I do in jump is to come to the DOE menu, and from classical I can choose that I want to create a response surface design. Now, of course, for our experiment, the response is critically important, but in terms of constructing the design, it's not. So let me just focus in terms of the configuration and I'll configure the design for three factors, and then I'm presented with a list, and these are the options that we see within Jump for the central composite design. Let me choose the first option here, central composite design, and then continue. And now I'm presented with a list of options, and I just want to focus attention on these options. The default on face is going to create a central composite face-centered design. If I change to rotatable, remember what I said, circumscribed design has a rotatable symmetry associated with it. So this is going to create a CCC design. And if I then want to shrink it down, I can select the inscribe option, and then I have the CCI design. So that's the basics of how we control the different design types, but there's much more, and in particular it's worth understanding the distinction between rotatable and orthogonal. And to be honest, this is where it gets really interesting. 
I've already illustrated the notion of rotatable symmetry. Remember, we have to take the axial points and extend them beyond the range of the factorial design. How far we extend them is going to depend on how many factors we have in the design. So what about orthogonal? Well, orthogonal is the language we often use for describing screening designs. And in screening designs, we are very keen to make sure that the estimates we have are uncorrelated with each other. And if that is the case, we have what's called an orthogonal design. So it turns out we can actually create a, a central composite design, which is orthogonal, by changing the distance of these axial points. Let me illustrate both of these concepts, rotatable and orthogonal, visually using some of Jump's functionality. So what I want to do is compare the two different design types side by side. So on the left, I've got rotatable, and on the right, I'll make this orthogonal. And just to help me keep track of these, I'm just gonna change these titles. So on the left, this is a rotatable design. Let me start off with rotatable and give you a visual representation of this. I can come to the design evaluation and look at a prediction variance surface. Now what this surface is telling me, the first thing it's telling me is at the center of the de design, the prediction variance is the highest. So what does this mean? Well, think about when we make a prediction. Um, if you think about using fit model, and using the prediction profiler in fit model in jump to make predictions, you always have a confidence band on that prediction. And that the size of the confidence band is being illustrated by this prediction variance. So our predictions are going to be worse in the center of the design. That's what this image is telling me. Be careful with the scaling. This is auto scaled and there's very little difference. A more realistic representation would be to kind of bring this up. So it's not quite as bad as it first looks, but um, nonetheless, the performance is worst at the center of this design. The key thing I want to focus on though, is the symmetry. So let me put some contour plots on here and then look down from above. And you can see very clearly uh, that this has got a circular symmetry. In fact, it might help if I bring this back down, you might get some more contours appearing on here. Okay, so those contours mean when I'm on the contour, my predictions are equally good on that contour. And you can see that it doesn't matter because they're circular, it doesn't matter which direction I go. It does depend on how far I am from the center, but it doesn't matter which direction I'm going, and that's the rotatable property. Now let me look at the orthogonal property. So I come to the second design. For the orthogonal design, I can use the design evaluation to look at a color map of correlations. And with an orthogonal design, I don't expect to see any correlations. Let me just add color to this. Now this matrix, this color map, goes up to X cubed effects. And we only really want to focus on the quadratic effect or everything up to second order. So just focus on this region. And you'll see that, of course, we have correlations on the diagonal. Let's just say an X is correlated with X. But all the off diagonal correlations are zero. They're the solid blue. So on the right hand side, we have orthogonal. And on the left hand side, we have rotatable. And you choose one or the other. And just to emphasize that, if I come to the rotatable design and I were to look at the color map of correlations, then you're going to see that you have correlations off the diagonal here. And conversely, if I were to look at the orthogonal design and look at the surface, then this surface doesn't have a circular geometry to it. So here's a summary of rotatable versus orthogonal. And then we have to make the choice and we choose by choosing the appropriate axial distance based on those radio buttons. But it would really be nice to have both. They are both beneficial properties. And it turns out we can have our cake and eat it. We can have both. And the trick is this, the distance we have to go in order to achieve an, um, the axial distance that we have to choose in order to make the design orthogonal depends on the number of center points. And as we add center points, we have to go further away and we can make the adjustment. We can add sufficient center points that the axial distance for an orthogonal design is the same as for a rotatable design. And let me illustrate that. The original design I was looking at had two center points. If I increase the number of center points to nine, 
let's look at what happens. If we come to the specification here, you can see that rotatable and orthogonal both have the same distance, at least to you know a couple of decimal places. Let's just call it actually just to one decimal place, we can call it 1.7. But it's the same distance, so it's both rotatable and orthogonal. So I can show you here the uh, prediction surface. If I put the contours on, those contours are circular. And if we look at the color map on correlations, there's no off-diagonal correlations there. So we have achieved a remarkable property here. The design is both rotatable and orthogonal. This is a totally stunning property. It's remarkable that we can achieve a design with all of these properties, but it's a heavy price to pay having nine center points. But if I want to argue the case for the center points, there's an additional argument. Not only we achieve the simultaneous property of rotatable and orthogonal, if we compare the prediction variance surface for the case of the original central composite design and the case where we've increased the number of center points, you can see a dramatic change to the prediction variance surface in terms of the overall flatness. That central peak that we saw at the very beginning has totally vanished now. And this then gives us a clue as to another way we can approach the design. We can say, well, how many data points, how many center points do we need if the primary goal is to make that surface flat? Because think about it, if it's flat, it must be pretty much rotatable, right? It's the same in all directions if it's flat. So um, we're not gonna try and make it totally orthogonal. Uh, we're not gonna make it perfectly rotatable, but we're gonna add sufficient center points that that area is reasonably flat. And that's the additional variance we have in jump, which is the uniform precision design, which I can illustrate here. And I can compare the prediction variance for the original design versus the uniform precision design. And you can see that central lump has got smoothed away. And I've tried to choose a reasonable, uh, reasonable scaling on these uh, such that we can do a fair comparison. And you can see actually the entire surface has shifted down for the uniform precision design, which is basically saying, look, not only is it flatter, but because we have more data, you're gonna make better predictions everywhere. Let me just illustrate this in the software. So I'm going to select uniform precision and you can see that this surface is pretty flat. There's a little bit of a lump in there, but nothing uh, substantial. And the color map has got some off diagonal correlations, but they are tiny, 0 0.09, that's a totally academic. Now, because it's not perfectly rotatable and it can't be perfectly orthogonal, there's gonna be a difference and you still have to choose. You could have it either orthogonal and those off correlations disappear totally, or you can have rotatable, and then this is gonna be perfectly rotatable. But look at the numbers, 1.68 versus 1.5. Uh, let's call it 1.7 versus 1.5. They're very close. Uh, what I would do is just take the midpoint. I'd just say, let's take a, a user-defined distance of 1.6. And in all practical measures, this is both rotatable and orthogonal. So yeah, it's not quite orthogonal, is it? But this off diagonal 0 0.05, totally academic. You're not gonna notice that in any practical application. Similarly, this surface is not perfectly flat, but you're not gonna notice any bumps. If you really wanted to take a, a more quantitative look at this surface, you can take a cross section using the prediction variance profiler and you can see how flat that is. Even if I zoom in, you'll see a little bit of a bump in the middle, but I have to zoom in at crazy levels to see that sort of distortion. So for real world cases, the uniform precision design is probably the best choice you can make in terms of working with central composite designs in jump. We've got more center points than you have for the default. It's more than two, but it's less than nine we're getting pretty much all the benefits we get from the orthogonal design with fewer center points. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving it a like. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.